Welcome to Module 6 of the Mandated Abuse and Neglect Prevention, Critical Incidents, and Human Rights Training, which should be taken annually by all staff. This module will cover Positive Behavioral Toolkit. Please be prepared to adjust the volume on your computer to listen to this training. To enable closed captioning, press the CC button at the bottom left or right of your video screen. This learning path contains some multiple components in the form of videos and quizzes. To be marked complete for this training, you must complete all modules and pass all quizzes in addition to completing the final attestation form and mandatory reporter sign-off. The agenda for Module 6 will include an overview of positive behavior supports, an overview of the positive behavior support toolbox, and a review of staff inappropriate behavior. Before we begin, a reminder that you are a mandatory reporter. This is a requirement of your job at DDS and for every person providing support to individuals funded by the department. Regardless of your title, you are a mandatory reporter. That means reporting abuse or neglect 24 hours a day, seven days a week, not just when you're at work. This is not an option to report abuse and neglect if you witness are informed or suspect it is taking place. As a mandatory reporter, your failure to report suspected abuse or neglect can be reported as neglect itself and may lead to progressive discipline. Any and all types of discipline may be considered depending on the severity of the abuse and neglect that was not reported. To elaborate on Connecticut General Statute 46A-11B, there must be reasonable cause to suspect abuse or neglect is taking place. The reporter should be prepared to explain the reasonable cost to AID central intake and other agencies as necessary as to why they think there was abuse or neglect. If you see it, suspect it, hear about it, or have reasonable cause to believe abuse and neglect is taking place, the first thing you should do is stop it. Intervene and protect the victim. Make sure the person receives any medical attention needed and be supportive, be kind, compassionate, and caring. And critically important is to report it. When you see challenging behavior, you might be tempted to overpower, argue, punish, coerce, or force people to behave the way you want them to. It may seem like it's our job to get people we support to comply and do what we say. However, this is not the best way to support people. Instead, we use positive behavioral support. This is a way to put the needs and wants and choices of the individuals that we work with first. It is important to remember that all behavior, including including challenging behavior is communication. And as support staff, we should strive to look for ways to empower the individual, partner with them, and give them choices to fulfill their life trajectory. Just like you and your family, the people we support know what they want and what they don't want for their lives. They each have a plan that reflects this. It is our job to use positive behavior support techniques to help empower people to live their idea of a good life and to ensure support to individuals we work with. As support professionals, we are intertwined throughout their lives, but should never become a barrier to their family or community in any way. Let's take a look at this video and learn more about positive behavioral support. What is positive behavior support? Sometimes things just don't go my way and nobody seems to get what's going wrong for me. And if I try to get my message across, bam. You get labeled with a behavior of concern. Positive behavior support could help. What's that? When something is wrong, positive behavior support works to make life better by finding the root of the problem and making a plan to solve it. Multi-element behaviour support, or MEBS, is a model of positive behaviour support and it does the same thing. He's behaving badly, that's the problem. Or maybe Dave is behaving like that because of the problem. PBS works out what the root of the problem is. How? It could be anything. PBS can use tools like a Wheel of Optimal Living to look for possible problems in the person's day-to-day -day life people they spend time with, the places, the activities, 
skills, and their physical comfort. PBS does a formal assessment of all these things to work out what is causing a problem for the person. The assessment gathers information all about the person's life by talking to all the important people in it. Most important of all, PBS talks to the person themselves to find out what is good and bad about their life. Does PBS only look at when bad behaviours are happening? PBS does look at the behaviour to learn how to help calm things. And it looks at times when the behaviour doesn't happen to learn what works well. What do you do with all that information? We make a positive behaviour support plan. Well, I hope the plan includes punishments for bad behaviour. No punishments. Nothing aversive that the person wouldn't like. No punishments? It's actually based on science and uses applied behaviour analysis techniques. It'll never work. There's loads of scientific evidence which says it works. I'd still prefer the usual treatments that are used. PBS can incorporate other treatments. Best of both worlds. Well, how do you know if it's working? PBS evaluates the plan to be sure it is working. So that's it, guys. The 10 ingredients of positive behaviour support. Number one, there's a message in the behaviour. Number two, we use assessment to find the message. Number three, we use multiple sources of information. Number four, the person is always at the centre of the plan. Number five, we look closely at the person's day-to-day -day life. Number six, we make a PBS plan. Number seven, there's nothing aversive in the plan. Number eight, the treatments are based on science. Number nine, we include other treatments. And number 10, we evaluate. What do you think? Yay! So it's all about me and making my life good. Dynamite. That's positive behaviour support. So let's take a moment to reflect on the video we just watched. What have you learned about challenging behaviors? Is this information new for you? How does positive behavioral supports relate to the outcome of the ABC model of reporting behavior? By looking at the antecedent behavior and consequence of a challenging behavior, can you see how this reporting model is helpful for an individual's team to discover connections about what is being communicated with a challenging behavior? Going forward, what ways can you think of that PBS can help you provide support and prevent abuse and neglect? the PBS Toolbox. This slide gives some examples of what we can do to help the individuals we are supporting on a daily basis. Just like she recommended in the video, give people activities that are realistic. Help them learn to be in, as independent as possible. Try showing them new things. Always make sure you are patient, provide personal attention, and schedule plenty of breaks. PBS Toolbox Suggestions. Here are a few concrete suggestions for giving positive support to the people you provide care for. Most importantly, stay positive. If a challenging behavior occurs, be clear with your directives. Don't communicate in ways that will trigger the individual. Remember the ABC reporting model as a team and keep in mind the individual's triggers for certain behaviors. How can you prevent the behavior from happening by eliminating triggers in the environment? Give positive reinforcement and encourage the individual to do tasks they enjoy. What tasks or goals does the individual like? What are they good at? And how can that correlate into you giving verbal praise or reassurance? Follow a person's plan. Use the same approach as a team. Following a person's plan is key to ensuring that all staff who work with the individual are consistent. And lastly, listen to the needs of the individual. Remember, behavior is communication. As a professional, it is important to approach the individuals that we support with respect and dignity. Learn about the person, their likes, dislikes, strengths, weaknesses, their goals, and their vision for a good life. Be realistic. Learn how you can best support each individual. Remember, some tasks need to be broken down into smaller steps, so be patient and understanding. Remember to ask instead of tell. 
ask a person what they want rather than just assuming. Speak calmly. Maintain your own self-control. Provide options. Give control to the person you support. And watch your body language. Remember, 93% of how humans communicate is nonverbal. Redirect the individual's attention to something or someone enjoyable for them or a goal they are working on. And if able, encourage physical activity or exercise. This can be a great alternative. Now we are going to view a video that shows employees having a discussion about challenging behavior. Hey, how was your weekend? Let me tell you about our weekend. The person that we work with swears at me, kicks the wall, and doesn't listen to me or any of the other staff. And they keep on getting to do what they want without any consequences. Right now they are rewarded. They're going out to eat and going to the movies with the staff. They should only be able to do that if they have no behaviors. No behaviors? How can somebody have no behaviors? Do you mean challenging behaviors? Yeah, no behaviors at all. Then they still get to go out with the staff. Okay, so you want the individuals you work with to have no behaviors, and then they get to do something they like. Let me ask you, who pays when they go out in the community? Not me. Who do you think? They use their own money. Okay, so you want the individual that you support to have no behaviors, do nothing at all, and only if they do that can they go out in the community once a week to do something they like with their own money? Yep. Do you hear what you're saying? How would you feel if that was your life? It's not my life. Okay, well, think about your own life. If you have a good day or a bad day, you still get to go home and reward yourself with something that you like because you're an adult. Why are the lives of the individuals that you support any different? No, I make the decisions for them. They should do what I tell them to do. So anyways, how do I get them to stop having the bad behaviors? Wait, so the individuals you support don't make any of their own decisions? Not really. Why should it matter? Well, it matters because they're adults. Our jobs are to support the individuals that we work with to make their own life choices, just like you or I do. They have the same rights. Whatever, that doesn't matter. How do I get them to stop behaving so badly? Okay, well, what do they do for fun? Do they help out around the house, cook, clean, do their own laundry? No, they don't do anything. I do everything for them. They still swear, they still kick the wall, and they still don't listen to the staff. And they still get to go out with the staff once a week, even if they have bad behaviors. How are we gonna stop these bad behaviors? Well, if I couldn't make any choices for myself, and I wasn't able to do anything for myself either, I would probably swear at you, kick the wall, not listen to anything that you had to say. Why don't you focus on empowering the lives of the individuals you support instead of just stopping the challenging behaviors? Teach them to do some things for themselves, like cook, clean, do their own laundry. Wait, so you're telling me if they do their own laundry, they're gonna stop all their behaviors? Well, not, not exactly. What I'm saying is focus on empowering the lives of the individuals that you support, increasing their positive life experiences, and allowing them to make choices for themselves. If you do, you'll probably see less challenging behaviors. Because remember, all behavior, even the challenging behavior, is communication. Put yourself in their shoes. Wouldn't you want to feel valued in your own home? Wouldn't you want to do things for yourself? Wouldn't you want to make your own choices? Let's take a moment to think about the video we just viewed. Think about the people you support and the people you work with. Have you ever worked with somebody like that before? What is an example from that video that would be inappropriate staff behavior? What are ways to ensure individuals feel independence and empowerment over their lives? How can you be sure you are providing the best support that is also person-centered? Why was the behavior of this staff inappropriate when it comes to individual rights? This training is the property of the Connecticut Department of Developmental Services and is protected under state and federal law. This material cannot be altered unless permission has been granted by the Connecticut Department of Developmental Services or the third party author. This information cannot be distributed for profit and should only be used for training purposes. Thank you for your time today. If you have any follow-up questions, please email dds.training at ct.gov.